Elena Genevieve. Elena Genevieve and prostitution. A while back, Elena Genevieve won Don't Come For Me. I like Elena Genevieve. You should check out her channel. To, uh, a while back, she came for me and she was like, don't get up and tell people that um, we, don't, we don't form a lot of relationships, right? We create the world around us. We need to tell people about all the good, successful relationships that we had, that we were like, you know, they're beating my door down with a stick kind of thing. Uh, valid point, very valid point. And, um, but conversely, this is kind of my retort to that. Is it like uh, prostitution, escorting, pornography, being a porn star, um, being a cam model, all of this different kind of jazz. You know, if you keep telling people that this is who we are, or if you keep presenting the transition as being God, then that's, that's how people will view us as well. Um, you know, I love Elena Genevieve's channel. Like her old vlogs were absolutely hilarious. Um, she's doing a lot of the Elena uh, demonetized, Ron bareback, demonetized kind of thing. And she's dating a um, guy who is a uh, a gay for pay porn star I, I don't have any issues with with the channel I think it's all kind of interesting um, you know I, I don't think her her husband is a gay dude or any of these different sort of things and I think there's kind of like a, a passing back and forth of information between like her and I on this channel um, but conversely, you know, I also feel like too, in relation to talking about uh, escorting, prostitution, slavery, you know, very much um, a lot of times prostitution, escorting, there's human trafficking that follows along with that too. You know, to paint everything as being roses and dollar signs in relation to being an escort or a porn star or sex worker of some sort and it being a trans girl not only does that negatively impact how people perceive us right it also is is a false image it's a false facade it does not necessarily it is it is not the full picture right you know, you can't tell me that anyone who's in, in the, the sphere of doing prostitution, sex work of any sort, there are not negative psychological impacts. You know, people do not do things like pick up drug addictions along the way or STDs or so forth and so forth and so forth, right? There's gonna be bumps in the road if you're, you're gonna be a sex worker of any sort to present that, that, that there is not, to only present the good side is like all those skateboarding videos. You see, I used to watch all these, I used to really love skateboarding and you'd see all these guys doing, taking all these like huge ass drops and doing like hauling up the fences and going down the f side of the rail and stuff. And right, and you, you see the ones that they land, but you never see the ones that they don't land, right? You see the flashy guitarist on Instagram you know, but you never see the amount of work that led up to it and the numerous, numerous, numerous amount of sticks that went into making up that just that one moment, that like 10 seconds of Instagram, like guitar star kind of thing. Or, you know, the numerous, numerous injuries that these guys who skate and do all these tricks endure and, and the broken bones and concussions and all of that that go along with it, right? Watch skateboarding fail sometimes. Right, you will be you'll be shocked. You'll be deterred from ever getting on a skateboard and doing any of those tricks. You know, and I sucked at skateboarding, so, but I pretty much enjoyed it. But 
it is it is a one-sided image, right? It is a one-sided visage because you, you do not get to see the full picture. And conversely, if if all that we talk about, you know, is like for example, Elena Genevieve's channel is incredibly successful. Elena Genevieve herself is incredibly successful in her own business endeavors into I think pornography and stuff like that. You know, she's she has videos of herself up on the web where she is incredibly successful in sex. You know, she is like like a Zen master when it comes to being a sex worker, <laughs> right? There is, it's, you know, or that they don't make money or that, you know, am I jealous of her? Yeah, sure, in some ways, in some ways, right? You know, she has a much larger fan base following. She's been able to have much more surgery. She's had hence a much more success, successful transition, right? But what is it worth to you? Maybe for some people, it's worth going through all of that, right? For me, it's not, right? And I try not to judge, but I, but I do try to look at things very pragmatically, right? Very pragmatically, you know, there are going to be um, STDs. There are going to be times when you, you've gotten raped. There are going to be times when you know, you were freaked out or there's going to be times where it's like you end up have, dealing with drug addictions because you have a low sense of self-esteem. Imagine her husband, not her husband, but her boyfriend, and having to navigate his way through doing gay for pay sex work. What if you like some aspects of gay for pay sex work? He's talked about some of these different things where he enjoys getting bottoms, right? But then it's like, that is just a sexual act. That is not necessarily a sexual act in relation to orientation. Some people would say it would. You know, I think traditionally Italians would say that the one on the top is, is the straight dude and the one on the bottom is the gay dude, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but that's how their cultural perception of that. You know, and it's like, but what if it was his wife who donned a strapped on strap on and pegged him you know would the, if a guy enjoyed some sort of like backdoor pleasuring is that gay I don't think so I ain't going there <laughs> you get that for me but I don't think so right and, and so we do very much create the world around us you know, we have we have much more say and much more strength than other people who attempt to misgender us. And and one of the pitfalls in doing something like having a social media account, for example, and being somebody like Elena Genevieve, and is is it like you label yourself as being transgender? People re will refer to you as being transgender. You label yourself as being female. People will refer to you as being female, right? And, in America and the US, they very much view them as being transgenders, as being third gender type people, non-binary type people. But here in Canada, it's a different story. Here in Canada, you know, we, we transition and we identify largely being more binary or we are non-binary. It's very much like this. It's like in, in the trans spectrum, the government put out a report about binary trans people and non-binary trans people. Non-binary people have very much have a transition as well, right? They transition from binary to non-binary, you know, and when you're talking to them and you're looking at them and you don't know, right? That is a successful transition for a non-binary person, right? And there are a lot of people out there who are just kind of like, I'm trying to beat this into submission to, to, to work for what it is I want it to work. You know, like, do I, do I, how do I perceive myself? Do I, do, do I perceive myself as being male and female? Do I perceive myself as being um, gender fluid? Do I perceive myself as being both? Do I perceive myself as being neither, right? If I'm, if I'm male at times, male presenting at times, and female presenting at times, is, is that a gender? Or is that the lack of gender? 
Is that gender askewity? Is that gender askewity a gender in of itself? Or is that gender askewity the lack of gender in of itself? And so people who transition, who become non-binary, very much do a transition. Conversely, that affects people who are binary, right? Because non-binary people may need or may not need this type of surgery or that type of surgery. People who transition very binary, uh, very much need this surgery, this surgery and that surgery to, to adhere to, you know, their, their being as binary as possible or as being as binary as far as they can take it. Like for example, I've never done the bottom surgery because I am, I am deathly afraid of it. It scares the living crap out of me. I've seen so many people with wounds down there. I've heard so many horror stories. I've met girls in person and seen the horror story. You know, like, do they all turn out like that? Probably not. But for other people who can't see their way through that, through the recovery process, it does. And then sometimes there's an aspect of luck of the draw in terms of something like infection. These are very real things when it comes to doing an invasive surgery. All surgeries are wounds, right? And I see people, I have seen patients who have like had horrible wounds and they're growing from like a flesh eating disease or Fournier's gangrene and who did not have surgeries. It just happened, you know, but they, I literally saw, uh, maybe I shouldn't say this. I saw somebody once put on a glove and stick their hand up in a cavity into the person's groin this far, this far. <laughs> because of rot. I, I, do, I don't want an infection there. I don't want all the complications that may or may not come, come, come along with it. Usually those complications come in part because uh, you didn't do things properly or you were in a shy position where maybe you were not able to do things properly. Who knows, but I really feel like we put all the focus on, on you look at Euphoria, Euphoria, uh, Hunter Schaefer and, and Zendaya playing the roles of two lesbian girls who, uh, one is cis, one is trans, and, well not trans, one is one transitioned, and those are, those have been probably very incredibly valuable roles. Someone like, doing like me may be encouraging to somebody else who's in my shoes to have a little more confidence and move forward, knowing that it's not not utterly impossible. And yet one time I was very much saying that it was, because it, it very much seemed like it was impossible to me. And it was very much like, couldn't I date a guy? Could I date a guy now that my, I'm kind of like accepting my sexuality as it is? Maybe because my transitions at this point, I don't know, maybe because Maybe because I have, because of my experiences, right? Maybe because, um, who knows? I've heard some people say that your, your gender does a little flip-flop sometimes when you transition. If that very much seems to be the case sometimes too, it might be a physiological aspect of the brain. You know, like who particularly knows why it is the way it is? Too much to think about, girl.